Tommy Joe Martins has been around NASCAR for a long time as a driver and team owner. He's got some great insight to the sport, not just in the Xfinity series, but for all series. I really feel fortunate that we can have him on the channel and now it's his first appearance in 2024. Now I'd like to welcome to the channel, Tommy Joe Martins. Tommy Joe, thanks for coming on. We really appreciate it. We're going to talk about the 2024 season and what we can expect at Alpha Prime. So let me hear what your thoughts are on the 2024 season. My thoughts for the 2024 season. Um, well, as we're about a week away from heading into it, uh, I have a lot of thoughts about the 2024 season. Uh, that's all my thoughts are is about the 2024 season. Um, just so much to get done before we go down to Daytona. Uh, so many things aside from just getting cars ready, right? Just all the planning that, that takes place. And I think that's something that, uh, you know, as I've kind of been on this side uh, now for a few years, I've, I've just gotten to learn kind of how a front office operates, even though I've kind of been the only one operating it. Uh, I've had a lot of people kind of come up through here and, and help me. And uh, there's just so many things that you have to get done on our side, um, as well as kind of planning everything out on the competition side too. And I've made life a little bit easier uh, on our on ourselves this year. Uh, we're running two cars full time. And I think in the Xfinity series overall, if I'm kind of looking ahead to 2024, I think this is probably one of the most competitive seasons I've ever seen in the Xfinity series as far as uh, teams and the equipment that they're bringing to the table and drivers and, and really just the caliber of competition. Uh, I think it is at a absolute all time high and, and we have to be ready for it. Yeah, you talk about the level of competition. So we've got Cole Custer's returning. Jesse Love is coming up. Um, Sheldon and Chandler are both going to JGR. So we know those are powerhouse teams. Um, Haley Deegan's coming up. And then I think the biggest one of them all is the guy who won the race, the cup race in Chicago last year, Shane Van Gisbergen. So, uh, he's coming on three-time champion in supercars. So what are your thoughts? I mean, he, he showed that he knows how to drive on a course that no one else knew how to drive on in Chicago against the best of the best. So what, what do you think? Obviously road courses, he'll do well, but once we get on the ovals on a regular basis, how how do you think he'll fare? Well, I'm I'm old enough now that I, I've seen this story before. Uh, it was Marcus Ambrose uh, when this happened. And I think Marcus would tell you, um, as special as he was on a road course, and he is still to this day one of the best I've ever seen on a road course. Um, and he was able to elevate teams uh, as a road course racer. And I, I still think that is that is possible. And we were able to see that with Shane uh, in a cup car. But I still think it's going to take him some time to get used to racing on an oval. It is a very different style of racing. It's something that's going to be far into him. He was able to run that truck race last year, uh, which was great. He was able to do that at, at IRP. But that is a very different style of racing compared to what we do in an Xfinity car on a mile and a half. And, and the way the air moves and super speedway racing is going to be <laughs> its own thing that he's got to learn. And uh, I just expect that to take time. I think he's an incredibly talented race car driver. I think he's going to get it. Uh, but I also think this is a, a hell of a series to try to be learning in, um, to be coming in kind of cold. So especially this year with the level of competition, I think it's just going to take some time. I think there's going to probably be some struggles early. He's on a great team. And I think by the end of the year, I expect him to be competing on all types of tracks. So you talk about the level of competition. And I remember when we talked several years ago, you were talking about how it kept getting better and better. And so it's clearly getting better still. It's trending in the right direction. Who do you think, do you have a favorite? Do you think, I mean, Cole Custer won last year. Could he come back and repeat? I mean, could it be one of the JRM cars, JGR? I mean, who do, who do you think is could be the favorite? Well, I, I think it's so hard to pick a champion or a favorite i just think you have to realistically pick the people that you think are are most likely to make the final four i mean i think sheldon creed is an extremely talented race car driver i think he's going to be over there at gibbs and uh elite level equipment i, I really like him um you know i look at aj allmendinger a guy that <clears throat> has won at the cup level uh going back down to call again and feeling like he's in a really competitive situation um I think Austin Hill proved that he's going to win races in this series, I think, uh, at RCR and, and what they're doing. 
And then I think you got to say Cole Custer, obviously he's the defending champion. Uh, so, I mean, if I had to pick the early favorites for the final four, you know, I kind of look at, at the front of the field and what's going on up there. Obviously junior motorsports has a really strong group of drivers too. You look at Sam Mayer, you look at, um, you know, what they had going on. Justin Algar is always a favorite to make that round and, and go deep in the playoffs. So uh, there's a lot of guys you could probably pick from up there in that class. And it's probably going to come from one of those teams uh, that gets hot and finds something um, and is able to get a few people in the, in the final four. And then from there, it's one race, right? We're, we're running one race and, and you just don't know how it's going to play out. It probably comes down to a restart as it usually does. And uh, quite frankly, I think the way that we determine a champion is a little random now, but at the same time, just making that final four and that final round, a lot of the times it's, it's proof of what you've done over the course of a season. You look at the season that John Hunter was able to have last year, uh, having such a strong season. If you're in that final four, you've already had a terrific season. You are a championship caliber driver on, on a championship caliber team. And, and that to me is kind of the measuring stick now. So for Alpha Prime, you have Ryan Ellis returning. Uh, he finished 25th last year with three top 15s and then Brennan Poole's coming on. So Brennan, I was just looking back through his record and he had that two good years at, at Chip Ganassi in 2016 and 2017, where he had, he finished sixth and had 17 top 10. So, I mean, he's, he's proven in the past with good equipment, he could race a car. So I would think that you're encouraged to have him on board this year. Yeah, absolutely. And having Ryan back is huge for us. We love the continuity of that. My guys love Ryan Ellis. He's been an incredible building block for our team here over the last few years. And and a veteran driver that I've raced with, and, and Brennan is a driver that I've raced against and had a lot of respect for. I love the way that he races. He's really smart. I look at Brennan is a guy that kind of fits the culture of our team. Um, he has never been afraid to shy away from a challenge. Um, he's done a lot of his stuff on his own uh, as far as finding sponsorship and, and kind of working his way into opportunities. He's won uh, at a national level. He's won in ARCA. Um, he's been really competitive in an Xfinity car. Uh, he's made the playoffs in the Xfinity series. He knows these cars really well. He's raced in the cup level. Um, I think he's one of the most talented drivers in stock car racing, you know, at the top levels. Like nobody is surprised when they see Brennan Poole's name on an entry list in the Cup Series, right? And and now that's a caliber of driver we have in our car now. Um, I look at this for Ryan Ellis as a, kind of an extended version of a rookie year, right? Like he took some time off out of the driver's seat. It took him some time last year to kind of get his feet under him. And at the end of the year, I felt like he was extremely competitive. So I expect more out of him this year. And I expect Brendan to really hit the ground running. And I think he sees our team as a, um, as a step up in competition level from some of the other teams that he's been on. And when, when he lost that DC solar sponsorship, and that was a whole fiasco in and of itself, you know, Brendan hasn't shied away from that. He, instead of just going, well, Oh, well, I guess I had my shot. Like, no, he, Put himself out there. He drove for start and park teams. He drove for uh, the back of the field in a truck series race. He drove the 30 truck. He drove a back of marker cup car. I mean, he just did whatever it took to keep getting to the racetrack and and put himself out there and go, look, I'm not really worried about what the team's doing. Put it on me. Like, I'll be the difference. I'll get us in the race this week. I'm not worried about the caliber of equipment that I'm in and uh, all the while he was kind of building up uh, his name again in the garage area and building up his reputation again. And the fact that he saw our team and his sponsors saw our team as a place that they want to try to make that step up in competition. I think that's so cool. Right. So I, when you look at this year, 2024, I remember several years ago, you and I talked and you were always talking about finishing top 20, you know, that would be a great season. So is that possible in 2024? Yeah, I think it's possible. I think things have to go right. Um, for us, it's really about eliminating mistakes more than anything else. Um, we're probably not going to be compete for top tens each and every week. Uh, when you have an opportunity, you got to close on it. And more than anything else, you got to eliminate the bad days, right? Like we understand uh, to got to, we're coming up on Super Bowl week here, right? Like if we had to think of the game plan for us to have a great year, uh, we don't have a high powered offense. You know, I don't have, 
um, you know, the best, latest, greatest, everything. We don't have tons of people and uh, engineers and stuff to create parts and all that kind of space age stuff that's coming from really cup affiliated teams at the front of our field, which is really what that is, right? Right. And the Xfinity program is an extension of really the cup program and where a lot of that technology has, has lived. So um, if we're an independent team and, and we're kind of a, a small team uh, and we're not that high powered offense, then really we have to eliminate turnovers. We have to eliminate mistakes, right? Like they're just afforded a lot more mistakes to be able to still score points, right? They have a, a bad race. They get wrecked out early. They're being aggressive. Um, they score five or six points in a race, not the end of the world, right? Cause they know they can come right back the next race and score 40. We probably are not going to get many chances to score 40, right? So we just got to be really consistent with everything we do and finish races. And I think, I've got two drivers that really believe in that process. And I've got uh, a couple of teams that really understand that too. And that's not just me saying, Oh, please don't wreck the car. Um, that is really the roadmap to us having a successful year in the points. We, we just have to eliminate the bad days. They hurt you way worse um, than having the good ones. Okay. Uh, and then the last question I have for you specific to racing is there was something on X or Twitter, whatever we're calling it these days recently about your return to racing. So can you provide any clarity on that? Yeah. So we're going to go late model racing. Uh, we're going to run the cars tour this year. Uh, Martin's Motorsports, the team that I ran with my dad uh, for so long uh, and ran different versions of NASCAR over the course of the years. Um, we're going to go cars tour racing. We've had a lot of fun uh, this past year. We built a super late model. We went and ran the all American 400. And I finished okay. We kind of got our butt kicked, to be completely honest. I hadn't been in a car in a little while, but it was a lot of fun. And I look at what's going on over here in the Carolinas with the Cars Tour. Um, I think the ownership in the series and the promotion of the series is terrific. Um, the costs have, are really a lot more affordable than going super late model racing. Certainly a lot more affordable than NASCAR racing. Um, and some of the old partners that we've had uh, been around in my racing career for a long time. They, they want me to race. I want to race. I enjoy racing. I love I love driving, um, but I don't want it to interfere with my day job, right? My day job is to try to make Alpha Prime Racing the best team that it can be. I want my focus to be on that. I don't want to have uh, conflicted versions of this where I'm trying to run an extra car and all this other stuff. Um, that's not where I really want to spend my resources. So I think that Martin's Motorsports in this new version of this can really be a place where we can develop some young mechanics that can then feed into our Xfinity program. We've had... Um, some new young mechanics that have interviewed with us over the last few months. Uh, they're really hungry. They're either straight out of college or they're straight out of NASCAR tech or uh, any other tech school. And it's not, they don't want to do it, but maybe they don't have racing experience. You know, they might even be a decent mechanic, but you don't really want to plug them into an Xfinity team. And the first time they're working on a car to be the car that's going to Daytona, just no offense. And, and I think I've, I've now kind of created an, I an identity for Martin's Motorsports and really what it should be. Um, it's located in a mile from our current shop, our new facility that we've got here. Um, so it's really neat for me to be able to kind of reach out and touch the place that, you know, I I felt like I kind of built it up over the years uh, for me to be able to race. And now it's this is a new version of that, right? It's, I'm, it's still a place for me to go race uh, with my dad and, and Rodney Reeson and our old partners and our old friends. Um, we get to go short track racing. We get to race places like North Wilkesboro and uh, Caraway and Hickory and these places with a lot of history. Uh, Tri-County, South Boston, um, really neat tracks, but also it's a, it's a development place for the mechanics that are going to come over here and work for us uh, on the Alpha Prime racing side. And now uh, we are really a, a kind of a triple A development team to the cup series well i kind of have a, a single a development team now for my team uh which is great and uh getting able to meet all the the kids and the personalities and and potentially be able to give somebody their start in nascar whether that be um as a mechanic or in marketing or whatever it is like that's going to probably be my legacy here and my team's purpose is for you know, these kids to, to come through and, and pass on and go on to greater things. And so I want to be able to go have fun and race. Um, but I 
think I've kind of figured out the way that I want to do that now in a way that's productive for our team too. Wow. It's, it's really interesting to hear, you know, talking about just a couple of years ago, you were the driver owner and now here we are, you had three cars. Now you got two cars. Now you got two cars and a late model. I mean, it's, it's pretty interesting to watch the progress and see how you kind of have your own farm team, like you said. So congratulations. I'm happy for you. I know that that's, you know, you talk, you always talk about, you've talked about it before legacy. And I think that is going to be your legacy, but you've always been outspoken, a voice in the sport that people appreciate. And so, and I've appreciated being able to talk to you for the last few years and you've provided me with a ton of knowledge and I'm super grateful for that. So I look forward to talking to you throughout the 2024 season. We'll see how often we can do it, but I, I really appreciate you joining me here today, Tommy Joe, and, and wish you the best of luck for 2024 for Alpha Prime. Thanks for having me on, man. Appreciate it. Thanks, buddy.